नमस्कार स्वागत छ दर्शकहरु न्यूज क्वेन फुट टेलिभिजनको यो प्रस्तुतिमा म नवराज पाण्डे यतिबेला नेपालमा 18 औ सार्क शिखर सम्मेलनको उद्घाटन भइसकेको छ र यतिबेला हामी सार्क शिखर सम्मेलन विशेषमा छौ खासगरी दक्षिण एशियाबाट गरिबी निवारण लगायत अवध विषयमा जुन दक्षिण एशियाली देशहरुले भोगिरहेको समस्या समाधानका लागि एउटा सामूहिक प्रतिबद्धताको खोजी सहित 18 औ सार्क शिखर सम्मेलनको नेपालमा बुधबार उद्घाटन भइसकेको छ इसी संदर्भ में आज हमें कुरा गर्ना गई रहेगा सो रहा हमें संग उन्हें चाहिए दिवला भारत में विशेष रूप से अर्थशास्त्र में डॉक्टर राखनु ने प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर अरुण कुमार वेलकम एट न्यूज़ 24 सर राव राइट नाउ वी आर इन द टाइम ऑफ साक समिट एडिन साक समिट व्हिच हेल्ड इन कठमांडू हाउ यू वैलिड we have example of countries that are coming together like in the eurozone and that's why eurozone has become now the largest producer in the world so when markets open out of different countries then that leads to growth so in that sense we are trying to become members of asean we're trying to member become members of asia pacific region we are trying to forge alliances so why not within the south asia region which is contiguous and where there are complementarities Unfortunately, when India was divided between India and Pakistan, contiguous areas that were complementary to each other, like in Punjab, like in Bengal, they were broken up and that affected the economy. And what has been found in the world is that when trade expands, then other uh, disagreements, they tend to reduce. So for instance, China has now become the largest exporter to India. And therefore, India and China, in spite of the differences, they have been forced to come together. So I feel that it's very important that SARC also makes an attempt to try and get together all the countries of the South Asia region. And here, India needs to play a very large role because Indian economy is the largest economy in the area. And other smaller economies feel threatened by India. So India has to make the other economies comfortable that India is not a threat and that when India uh, forms a union of some kind, not at the moment a union like the Eurozone, but at least a closer integration, more trade, more exchange of expertise, more universities opening out to each other, more facilities being given to the, the countries that are poorer countries in the region, then I think that will integrate the whole area and will uh, make everybody a happier person in the whole South Asia region. Along with this all, there is also an issue or debate uh, being the India is giving less priority in the shark region or is not issue, raising the issues of a uh, common problem of this region. Mainly India focus on the economic growth of uh, one countries and not it's leading to the South Asian region. Do you agree with the point? No, that, that's why I was saying it's important that India should play a larger role in bringing the South Asian countries together. But unfortunately, given the political divisions that have been there, historical divisions, this process has been very slow because there are mutual suspicions. And that's why it is important that if it begins with trade and begins with cooperation in education, begins with cooperation in health area, where India has certain lead in certain areas, then the mutual suspicions will decline. And once the mutual suspicions decline, then the integration will be much closer. Just like in the case of Europe, France and Germany used to uh, have had uh, several world wars, two world wars with each other, and they've had you know difficulties with each other. There have been mutual suspicions, but as the integration took place of the Eurozone, slowly, these suspicions declined and now Germany and France are together in that area and giving the lead to the whole of Europe. Similarly, between India, Pakistan, India, Nepal, India and Sri Lanka, all the suspicions that exist, they have to slowly be allowed to melt away. And for that, it's good that economic integration takes place. The India helps in various areas like education, health, etc. as I said, and also trade increases. Along with this all, I need uh, more description about the, just you before mentioned that the uh, strength of a European Union as like uh, United States. Along with in the 30, uh, around 30 years old SARC being, and just we are in the 18th uh, summit. Right. But uh, we can see the impact of this strength of this regional cooperation. So you're, being so. you're right, because the mutual suspicions are not going away. The two largest economies of South Asia, Pakistan and India, they've had mutual suspicions. They have not been able to integrate with each other in a greater way than should have been done in the last 30 years. Similarly, Bangladesh and uh, other uh, nations of the region, they've had mutual suspicions. These suspicions have to be somehow tackled politically. And also, as I said, if trade expands and mutual cooperation expands in areas that are neutral, like for instance, education, like health, etc., then that will help in uh, bringing them together more. So then only progress can be expected. 
I hope you can give your precious space in the, how do you assess the Indian role to fight against poverty? Okay, uh, India has uh, been to a certain extent, uh, you know, fortunate that uh, its economy has done well in the last uh, 10 years and therefore, according to the official line, the poverty has reduced. Uh, but still, poverty remains entrenched in India. For instance, we have the largest number of poor people in the world, we have the largest number of uh, illiterate people in the world, we have the largest number of malnourished people in the world. And that is because in the new economic policies, we are not looking at the distribution, how much the poor people are getting, what is the trickle down to the bottom. Our policies are based on trickle down rather than based on bottom up approach as was suggested by Gandhi and other thinkers. So in, in that sense, while we have managed to tackle poverty to a certain extent, it still is very large in India. So India's policies have this dual character. You know, because of the poverty and so on, what we did was because of the higher growth of the economy, we started the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, we started the Sarv Shiksha Abhiyan to give literacy to the children, we started the Right to Food program, and we started many other such programs so that those who are at the bottom, they can be helped to come up in different ways. So not only the issues of poverty, South Asian regions mainly faces in the problem of hunger, ill health, and along with it, a newly problem is emerging as a climate change problem. How can we uh, improve the situation, the current situation, uh, from this uh, common uh, integrated agenda with these problems? You see, uh, as you said, we have ill health problem, we have unemployment problem, we have poverty problem. But in addition now, the problem of environment and climate change. And I think for that, we have to worry about, because you see, even China has this problem of rapid growth, but environment deteriorating. So India is also now facing the same problem, and I think the other Asia, South Asian countries are also facing the same problem, that we are concentrating on growth and not thinking about our environment. We are not seeing how sustainable growth can be achieved, because without sustainable growth, the environment will be polluted. So like, as you know, that during Beijing Olympics, half the cars had to be removed from the roads, otherwise the pollution was very high in that uh, country. Similarly, Delhi is now one of the worst polluted, uh, air polluted uh, cities of the world, even though our consumption level is very low compared to advanced countries. So we have to worry about environment along with growth. We have to think of sustainable uh, development. And in that context, a lot of uh, research has been done, what kind of sustainable development developing countries should go for. So do you agree that mainly the South Asian regions cannot upgrow in the economic status? So mainly there are certain problems as like uh, corruption, maladministration. Are they uh, played a major role to uh, unleash the current situation? Yeah. You see, because of uh, corruption now, the black economy in India is 50% of GDP. That means roughly about $900 billion this year will be generated as black uh, economy. And because of this, there's an impact on the environment, there's an impact on development, because India, because of the black economy, is losing 5% rate of growth. So if this black economy had not been so large, today India, instead of being $1.8 trillion, would have been about $12 trillion economy. So we're losing $10 trillion worth of development every year. Similarly, it leads to balance of payment problem because there's flight of capital, and India has lost roughly $1.2 trillion worth of uh, capital, and its opportunity cost is roughly that much. So balance of payment problem is because of that. And because you have balance of payment problem, you cannot do certain kinds of things in your economy. Similarly, on the employment front, if capital is going abroad rather than being invested in the country, then you have less employment and less growth. So in other words, black economy is a very major factor in setting back development in India. It leads to poor governance and poor delivery of policies. So for instance, education. You want to have literacy, but if the schools are not made and the money is eaten up, then the literacy is not achieved. Similarly, if in the health centers in the rural areas, the medicines are not there or the doctors are not there, then the health situation deteriorates. So in other words, the black economy has a major negative impact on the economy. And one of the reasons why poverty persists in India and why development is not higher is because of the corruption in the black economy. In the same issue, today I talk with the, one of the diplomatic spots of Nepal. He told me that South Asian regions uh, in the uh, last time just being the club of poverty. Do you agree on that point? Yes, I mean the South Asian region has uh, poverty concentrated here, especially because India has large poverty and India is the dominant uh, country in this area. And as I said, uh, almost the entire South Asian region 
is beset with corruption and with the, the black economy. So for instance, in Pakistan, you have the problem of drugs, you have the problem of gun running, you have the problem of illegality. Similarly, you know, you have the uh, <coughs> terrorist movements which are involved in uh, all these different kinds of activities. So when you have this kind of gamut of activities, then focus shifts away from development and uh, poverty removal to the kind of you know, prevention activities, to the kind of, you know, <coughs> the, uh, the defense expenditure rising, etc. So all these factors are contributing to the poverty remaining entrenched in the South Asian region. In the same issue, some of the foreigners advised me or told me that um, mainly India, uh, the South region is in uh, these countries, among these all countries, India is the most powerful and it's um, going and uplifting the uh, current situation in economic or in a political or, or industrialization sector. India is quite being doing some progress and it's updated or growth. But in the South region, it's being a less priority for India. Is that the major problem? You see, India is doing well. Uh, overall in terms of growth because India's growth rate has come down from 8.5% to only 4.5% whereas Eurozone is now going into recession, Japan has entered recession, US economy is growing only at about 1.5% to 2% rate of growth, China's economy has also slowed down from about 10% to 7.5%. So India's growth rate is second after China in that sense. So it's, it's still creditable that India is still growing at this rate. But the problem that as I sa said is that the distribution is not right. Most, most of the gain from this growth has gone to the well-off sections and the poor people have not benefited as, as much. Now when you say that is the South Asian region benefiting from this growth, then clearly unless trade is more and unless the mutual cooperation is more, other regions will not be able to benefit so much. So if we do not reduce the mutual suspicions that exist between India and Pakistan, India and Bangladesh, India and Sri Lanka, etc., and do not come for greater cooperation, you'll find that the growth that takes place in one part of South Asia may not benefit another part. So kindly you are here in Kathmandu right now in the occasion of Indian Sark Summit. Mainly there is the problem between India and Pakistan, such a problem being uh, which is not uh, uh, smoothly run of the Sark region. Is that the major problem relation between India and Pakistan? Uh, well, the problem is historical. The way India and Pakistan separated the time of independence and there was mutual suspicion between the national movement in India and the movement that created Pakistan. And that uh, we have not been able to overcome because as soon as India and Pakistan uh, became free, there's a war in Kashmir and then later on in 1965, there's another war. And then in 71, uh, India was in some sense instrumental in separating East Pakistan from West Pakistan and creation of the Bangladesh. So there's been mutual suspicion between India and Pakistan all along. And this has been fed, I think, by the international uh, forces because uh, uh, you know, there was a Cold War in the 1950s where uh, you know, the superpowers were trying to incorporate India and Pakistan into their own spheres of influence. And Pakistan joined uh, CENTO and India did, uh, uh, you know, was the leader of non-aligned non -aligned movement. So in that sense, there was a political uh, sort of struggle that was taking place because you know, in a sense, Pakistan was being goaded by the US, it was being held by China. And therefore, this mutual suspicion, not only between India and Pakistan, but also because of international relations, has actually deepened. And in spite of the many attempts that have been made by India's and Pakistan's leaders, we have not been able to come to an agreement on how to reduce these tensions. I hope, and we people normally hope that you should have some clues which must be followed by the summit and must be implemented. Do you have any clues? As I said in the beginning, you know, if we uh, are not able to agree on the political front, we can ag at least agree on the trade front to expand trade amongst ourselves. And even if we, you know, if the suspicion that India is a very large economy and may overwhelm the economies of other countries, we can, uh, you know, mutually help each other in other areas like education, like health, you know, like building people-to-people -people contact uh, in, in our countries so that these mutual suspicions go down over a period of time. So I would suggest that if we are not able to make progress at the political front or at the trade front, at least these fronts where you know, India can help other countries and the other countries with their expertise can help you know, in developing mutual relations, those will be very helpful like in sports, in health, in education, all these other sectors. So thank you for your precious speech. Thank you. Thank you.